I haven't done an update on this homebrew computer for a project for a while, so I thought I should do that and uh, um, post something about the, the latest changes. Um, so there really aren't actually any changes to the hardware. The board looks a little different, but in fact, it isn't. Um, the, the configuration is exactly the same, although a few things have moved about here on the board. Not so much um, for the functionality that's already there, but more in preparation for what's going to come next, um, which I'll talk about a little later. Um, but in fact, at this point, most of the development work has been not on the hardware side, but on the software side. So we'll go over and take a look at the, at the software. Okay, so here's our terminal window connected to the uh, computer. Um, let me just hit the reset button. Um, and so we're at the monitor, and this is the same monitor that, uh, that, that we saw in the previous videos. Um, and so uh, the, the um, main new thing I've been working on is a compiler for fourth which is uh, um, an interesting and unusual programming language that uh, com was common on uh, computers of this era because it works very well on um, machines with, uh, with limited resources and 8-bit computers of this sort um, are just like that. So, um, so now I'm running the, the fourth interpreter loop here um, I call my fourth uh, system second because it's the second one I've written and also because it's about half a fourth, although I guess half a fourth should really be an eighth, but never mind. Um, so fourth is pretty unusual in a whole variety of ways. Um, the, the way that people sort of talk about most commonly is that it is stack-based, um, which means that your primary source of communication and data storage is a stack, a stack is a data structure where sort of like a, a pile of paper or a stack of pa books, um, the, the thing you take off the top, um, the, that is the thing that you have access to, is the thing that you put on most recently. So for instance, if I put the number 10 onto the stack by just typing it, and then I put the number 20 and I put the number 30 onto the stack, and then I ask it to tell me what's on the top of the stack, um, take the first item off the stack, that is, then what I get back is 30, and then 20, and then 10. So you get things back in the opposite order to which you put them on. And if I put those things onto the stack again, say 10, 20, and 30, um, and then I say add, what it's going to do is it's going to add the two items on the top of the stack, take them off, the 20 and the 30, add them together to make uh, 50, and then that's the item that's on the top of the stack. So now the top of the stack is 50, but the 10 that I was under there is, is still there. Um, so if I do 10, 20, 30, and I say add, um, that's going to add those two, the, or um, the, the 20 and the 30 to make 50. And then if I say um, multiply, it's going to multiply that 50 by the other item on the stack, which is the 10, um, and then I should have 500. Yeah. So, um, so it's a rather unusual way to specify arithmetic, but it means that when you put pieces of a program together, you can use the stack to communicate between those pieces of, uh, of the, the program. Um, so really, when you write a program in fourth, um, it's sort of like you're uh, piecing together little pieces of assembly language, and it uses the, um, uses the, the stack to connect them together. Now, my computer is an 8-bit computer, um, and so we're doing signed arithmetic here, so, so as well as having numbers like um, uh, 500, which I can get to by multiplying 10 by 5. Um, I could also multiply, or 100 by 5, sorry, multiply 100 by um, negative 5. I get the number five, negative 500. So I can handle negative numbers, but I'm handling them as 16-bit um, numbers, which means I can have up to about... Um, 32,767 uh, 32, on the positive side and negative 32768. But it is actually possible to handle bigger numbers. Fourth has the capacity to handle what it calls double length numbers. And so if I was to do um, a calculation, um, let's say uh, 4321, and I want to multiply that by, say, 20,000, well, that would be bigger than 
32767, so it will be harder, higher than a number that we can represent in 16-bits. Um, in but I can multiply those in order to get a um, double length number out. Um, so I can get large numbers out that if, as long as I tell it that I want to process them as double length numbers, that's why I have to do things like two dupe and d star. Um, and so I can do you know a variety of um, of things there. So I can um, I can add uh, you know, I can double this double length number by by copying it and adding it to itself. Um, and so you can process. Oops, sorry. Um, can process um, large numbers at, um, that's, uh, you know, those are 32-bit um, numbers. So that's like four times larger than the processor can handle, um, handle all by itself. Fourth operates by having um, a large number of these small um, commands, small, it calls them words, um, that uh, many of which are, are predefined. So if I type words, it'll tell me all the different words that it already knows about. Um, and I can easily add new ones. You can define a new word by saying, well, here we're defining the word twice. So if I want to take a number and say, what's twice that number? And I say, I'm going to do that by, um, by duplicating the number that's on the top of the stack and then doing an add command. So that will add it to itself. Um, and then I can say, okay, so I've got 45. And I say twice. Um, and then ask it to print the result, and the result is the result is ninety. And now, if I was to type words and ask it, what are all the words you know about? You can see that the word twice appears at the beginning there. So the new words that you define operate in exactly the same way as the words that are already there. Still, it's a real pain to have to like type all of those things um, every time from scratch. So one of the things I've done with this is to integrate it with the uh, with the, um, the XMODEM implementation that I'd um, already written. So let me just uh, type something that's going to make my life a little easier here. Um, so I can, um, I can integrate this with the version of XMODEM, the transfer protocol that's already built into the monitor. And that's going to let me upload programs that I have stored, fourth programs that I have stored on my computer here. So let me just, for instance, um, send it some, um, some fairly sort of like basic extra uh, commands. There they are, and it's loaded them up. If I type words now, you see there's new words like um, page and home and numimit. So page, very simple, just sort of uh, clears the screen. Um, and I can use that. The, 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 um, I've got no um, graphics on this computer, but you can do simple things just using sort of text graphics. And so one of the commands in here is the uh, um, rect command. And so let me just do, um, let's tell it that at 15 by 15, um, I want to draw a rectangle that is uh, 10 by 10. And we sort of draw that just in little ASCII characters. Doesn't, you know, it doesn't look like 10 by 10, but that's just because of the way the aspect ratio works on here. So can't really do much by graphics. You're not going to be doing any um, you know, first-person shooter games in this, but, uh, but it's enough to just sort of play around with a, with a couple of little things. So just to sort of finish this out, let me show you one other, uh, one other thing. Um, so we'll upload a different file here. And this is a, um, a classic for, um, for, for the time, for the, the era of this computer, these sort of 1970s style oops, um, um, computers, uh, which is that uh, it's, a, it's Conway's life. So, so this is a little cellular automaton, automaton program. Um, so let's do uh, 20fgen, run 20 generations of the uh, um, life program. And it's got sit here, sit divined here with a, with a um, glider. So that's a, a self reproducing um, pattern that sort of moves across the screen. It's running pretty slowly here. I haven't done anything to optimize this program. It's just the very most basic version of life that I could build. Um, but you can see this little pattern in the stars that sort of uh, um, redefines itself, reconfigures itself, and moves slowly across the across the board. 
Um, and I don't know, I think pretty much every computer I saw in the 1970s and 1980s would, uh, would have a game of um, life, this, uh, this, this cellular automaton program running, it, running on, on it at some point. Um, so it feels like a nice little uh, moment for, um, for feeling that the, <laughs> the computer is doing what it's meant to do, which is, uh, which is to be like one of those 1970s, 1980s computers. So just to come back to the board here for a minute um, to talk about what's going to happen next. Uh, the one change that you might see on here is this chip. This chip is not actually connected to anything just now, but that's a 6522, which is a Vercel interface adapter, basically a bunch of GPIO programmable, GPIO pins, parallel ports. And the plan is to um, incorporate that into the design and then use it to be able to talk to, I've got a little breakout board for an SD card, a secure digital card. Um, and, you know, a computer of this era would often have cassette tape to store things, or perhaps if you were lucky, um, a floppy disk drive. Um, those are pretty old media these days, and it's hard to make them work with uh, with in the contemporary um, situation. But I think I can use that 6522 to bitbang the SPI protocol, and that'll let me talk to an SD card or a compact flash card and use that for mass storage so that um, BASIC or um, FORTH, my FORTH system, will be able to use that to, um, to store programs. And at that point, you know, I really think that the BASIC design for this thing um, for version one at least uh, will be done and um, then the, the main next job after that um, after sort of building out the software a little um, will be to get it off a breadboard and onto a more permanent um, mounting so either a sort of wire wrap or some other kind of uh, prototyping board that I can uh, um, rely upon a little more stably. One of the problems with this board is that um, if you wiggle it <laughs> it sort of breaks for a couple of days. So um, so something a little more stable um, is the, the, the next hardware uh, project here.